adding some color to your videos can completely shift the mood of your video. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to put filters on our videos. So we've learned all about these windows and now it's time to go to the effects window. Over here, you can find many things such as filters, overlays, utilities, and LUTs. Now this should be familiar to you because we looked at LUTs in the color correction lesson. The only difference is that here you have a lot more options. We have the classics like that below seven series, Batman and all that. But if you go to others like cinematic, you have new items and you have plenty more to choose from. You can download them, double click to see a preview. We have things like color correction. This is where your custom LUTs will go. The ones that we make in the color correction tab, like we saw in a previous lesson. We even have things like anime. Let's download one, double click, and we get really vibrant colors. Then we have sci-fi colors for gaming and neon. Now let's take a look at the filters tab, open it up, and we have a lot of options for our videos. Now filters are different from color correction because you're not correcting anything. You're adding a combination of colors on top of your video. In other times, it could also be something that's not related to colors like chromatic aberration or blur. Things like fish eye and maybe distort. And we just have a lot of options to choose from. Let's take a look at them one by one. The first one we have is shake. Uh, this one just shakes your videos as you can see. And it could be great for some epic montage that you may have. We have different directions like sideways, up and down. Now this is where you get those color overlays. Whatever you drag onto your video, you can, you can change the properties. Let me just get a video from the stock media tab. And now I'm going to head over to effects, come to Fox film, where I can just add any of these on top of my video. So this is a new layer for this effect. You can also add it directly on your video like so, but this way you're not getting it in a separate video layer. If you want to change it up, you would have to double click and head over to video effects to alter the uh, filter. The only properties for this particular filter is changing the opacity, which as we learned is how much of that element is there. If it's 100, it's fully there, but if we reduce this, uh, it will be less. So we have 27% of this uh, element. If you wanna go back to the default setting, you can either hit this icon or hit reset and you'll be directed back to what Filmora kept for you. You can also uncheck this to see it without the effect or turn off video effects completely. But if you have multiple effects on one video, you're going to turn all of them off. Let's go ahead and hit this X icon because I don't want this filter anymore. Let's hit OK and take a look at some other ones. We have this one, which is called Split Style. As you can see, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna drag it on top of my video. The video still plays, but you have this split screen effect. If you double click on this, you have some options. Basically, whatever's on the left is after these modifications and whatever's on the right is the original video. So basically, I get to mess around with the reds in this video. If I move it to this side, I'm gonna get something like this. Go all the way back and we're removing all the reds. So you can just drag the slider and see how you want to edit this split screen. We can also mess around with the greens. And these are the channels, by the way, not necessarily the greens in the video. You can also work around with these. And of course the blue channel. You can mess around. And finally we have opacity which we are pretty familiar with. So unless it's something special like split style, uh, you're not going to get much options for filters. Let's try this one. And you can see I only have one slider. But if it's something special like shake, you can double click and I have a lot of options. We have, for this example, 
the frequency of the movement. So let's play this back. And you can see this is pretty intense. The higher I go with frequency, the more shake I'm giving my video. Let's play this back. If I lower this, I'm going to make the shake minimal. You can see how it's not as intense, but you can also work with the positions down here to adjust the intensity. How much do you want it to move on the X axis? Position X. How much on the Y axis and how much on the Z axis? You can just work around with these. Take a look at that, get rid of it. So Fox Film, Night Life, and these ones are just filters that you only have the option to adjust the opacity slider. But when it comes to shake, background blur, distortion, you get more options. So even if you go on any of these, common, let's add one on top and I'm just getting one slider. But if I go in background blur, I have a lot more options. You can see. Now the background blur feature is not meant for horizontal video like this one. So I'm going to use a vertical video for this example. Let's get rid of these. Add my vertical video. Make sure you keep it landscape. So keep project settings. And right now, if I were to post this, I'm getting these black bars on either side and that's just not uh, interesting. So I can use the background blur to blur out the edges. Let's place it on top. And basically with this element, Filmora is going to take your video, scale it in, and then feather it out and use it as your background so you don't get those black bars instead. Let's double click on this effect. And if I remove background feather, you can see that it's indeed my video, just really large. There we go. It's still playing in real time with the middle video. And we can just adjust the uh, scale level by working with source width. So if it's less, it's like that. If it's more, it's like that. You can choose the background color, which is the color that goes on top of this video. Right now it's white, but I can make it green, red, or any other color that I like. And let's close this. Once I chose my color, I can change the luminance, how bright I want this video to be. This is bright, this is dark. And the feathering is the feathering is how blurred this part of the video is. So you can just drag this until you get something like this. And of course, opacity is the visibility of the whole thing. Let's hit reset. And if I want this to be on my entire video, I need to make sure that it starts at the same time as my video because over here it's still the black bars it only starts uh blurring once it reaches here and it finishes right here so i'll get the black bars again so i need to make sure this is starting with my video let's get rid of the rest starting with my video and ends with my video instead so i don't get even a second of black bars now let's try distortion this tab Let's go to chromatic aberration, add it on top of my video, and we will get this effect. Pretty cool effect. If I double click, I have options. We have fade, which is how much the video fades, uh, the colors fade actually. If you notice, when we play this back, there are these colors just coming onto the screen. Let's choose a frame where we're seeing the colors. If I remove from the fade, you can see how uh, they're going back into the video. So this is when they're detached. This is when they're a part of it. And then of course we have opacity, which is the visibility of this effect. So if I keep my fade around 0.9 or something, I will get something more minimal compared to what we had before. When you add colors to a video, you can also change the mood of that video. You can make the video appear sad or make it look happy just by adding certain colors to your videos. Let's head over to filters again. I will go to Instagram like where we can find a lot of colors. If I add a warm uh, filter on this, I'm making this video nostalgic, 
and happy because we have a lot of warm colors. Warm colors include red, yellow, orange, and anything that uh, I guess resembles the sunlight. And when you add warm colors, you can transform a video into a more happier uh, video. Similarly, at the opposite end, if you add a cold uh, filter, I guess this is cold, kind of cold, you are going to make your video sad. So because we have cold colors, so that's like blue and cold greens and purples, Anything that reminds you of the actual cold is going to make you immediately think of something sad, something lonely, and something um, just cold. If I add a blue filter on top of this, I can make this video look as if it was shot on a cold day just by doing that. Let's try this from the Fox Film uh, thing. Add it on top. So I can make my video look like it was shot on a cold day. If you wanted to change your videos, just head over to the filters tab if you want a quick uh, touch for your videos. But if you want to go for a more professional uh, outcome, you want to go to the color correction window. Just like all the other windows, we have a default and we have a film stock option. Now in film stock, we have the hot recommended and they're always telling you what's new and they're all categorized into different um, groups. In film stock, you're getting overlays. There are additional elements going on top of your video. Let's try this. So this is an overlay because it's adding additional things on top of my video. So it's not adding color, but it's adding shapes, lines, and other things. And that's the difference between overlay and filter. Let me just drag this on top. This is overlay. And let's grab one of these. Filter just puts something on the entire screen. So there's nowhere that's not affected by this flushed effect. But with overlay, you're getting partial areas occupied by this new effect. So the difference between filter and overlay is that filter covers the entire thing. Overlay is an additional element on top of your video. And you can put multiple filters on top of each other. They don't have to always be one thing. Let me make a new video track. So that was filter one, filter one. I can add another filter on top. Just be careful that the result is okay. Let's try three filters on top of each other. Add this on top. And now I have this weird color uh, combination, but I can double click on each one, reduce their opacity so I can get a better result. So for equalize, I will keep it 52. For Arizona, I'm gonna keep it 75. And for Sage, I'm going to make it 40. So I can combine different filters on top of each other to get a different result if I'm not happy with what I'm getting already. And you could also add them on top of on your video if you don't want to see this stacking effect. I'm just going to stack a few inside my video layer instead of on top. Let's get this one too. And this way, if I wanted to edit things, I have to double click my video, go to video and head over to the effects. And now you can see we have all three, and this is way better when you have multiple filters on top of each other because you get to edit them in one place. You can just compare the numbers and get something out of this. If I change my mind about one of these filters, I can hit this X icon, turn this off for a second to see a before and after. And if I wanna turn off the effects completely, I can turn this off, just switch it off and bring it back on if I need to. If you change your mind completely, you can turn, uh, hit this reset button and they will be back to what they were, or you can just get rid of them like this. And we learned in the previous lessons about video transitions. Transitions also apply to filters. Let me get flushed again, but just make sure they're on their own uh, video layer. Then get transition and I can put dissolve at the start of this and I will get this effect. 
like that. So it's like it went away and then it came back with this new effect, this new filter. Now the reason why it's going everywhere is because like we said, filters go everywhere themselves. So with filters, you're getting the full screen affected and that is why transitions will affect your full screen. So that was how you can use filters. They're pretty handy and I'm sure you will use them quite often because they just make your work a lot easier. Now that we know how filters work, let's take a look at overlays.